What's up, guys? It's your boy DT here from Straight Up Growth with another Straight Up Visionary podcast. Um, super excited today to have my guest, Justin. He is also a dog lover, so we love that. <laughs> uh, and Justin, why don't you introduce yourself to the folks yeah. here? Uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, my name is Justin Buckley. I'm one of the co-founder, co-founders and partners of Attention Agency. We are a uh, creative fueled performance and growth marketing agency for direct to consumer brands. Uh, we uh, provide services, your like paid social, paid search, shopping, connected TV, programmatic, uh, direct mail, email, SMS, and uh, in-house creative services. Um, been doing this about uh, the agency. We're about five years old, based out of San Diego. We're about, I'd say almost about 40 people large at this point. Feels pretty awesome growing this, uh, growing this little biz. Too shabby. Uh, with my awesome partners, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, very excited to have Justin on today. He's extremely, extremely knowledgeable. Uh, but today I want to learn about how'd you get there, right? I know you weren't hashtag born with this knowledge, right? Where where did it come from? How'd you get into the field? Uh, tell yeah. us a little, little bit about that. Yeah, cool. Um, I guess a journey for me started uh, like 12 years ago. I met one of uh, one of my business partners, Joe Selbo out in LA, we were doing real estate together. Uh, at that point, uh, I also met another, uh, one of my partners, Bobby Dietz. Uh, he was in uh, real estate as well, just different, different cities. Um, none of us had any idea that this was going to be the path that we were going to chart, right? We were all kind of just like cutting our teeth in commercial real estate, trying to build a name for ourselves in respective cities. Um, about a year after I met Joe, he moved down to San Diego and in catching up with him, he started talking to me about uh, this affiliate marketing stuff that he was doing. And at that point I was kind of bored with the whole real estate thing. And I just hit him and I was like, look, like, I just want to learn this. Like, can I come down there? I want to like, I want to do this. Um, that kicked off us working together. It was like the, the uh, initial, initial partnership. Uh, I was in affiliate marketing, basically, um, for those people who don't know what that is, it's <clears throat> basically you're spending your own money to sell other people's products and you take a commission. Um, and that's how we, that's how we learned, right? That's how we cut our teeth. As you said, we weren't born with it. It was like, this was totally new to us. Um, it was just like, holy hell, we can like, yeah, and especially we affiliate, it. just to wow. interrupt there, like for those of you that are not in the affiliate world, affiliate is the scrappiest of the scrappiest of digital yes. marketers. It's 100%. literally the wild west. Uh, and that is why you learn so much during during things like that. It's because it's of all truly the trial by fire. It's like it's your money. If you don't make money off of it, like you're broke really fast. Um, and we kind of lucked out. Like, I, I don't know, maybe we just have a, like a unique uh, I think maybe it's a combination of having a unique perspective on on like what to show people to get them to click as well as just like tenacious work ethic where we're just like we would grind we were working until like two three o'clock in the morning waking up at 8 a.m getting back after i mean we were younger so we didn't have anything getting in our way um <clears throat> but we were just like we just went after it um we worked in the affiliate space for i would say about five years at that point uh, Bobby randomly, uh, made this also made the switch from, uh, from real estate to, uh, marketing and my brother, Andrew Buckley, who is also one of the other co-founding partners of attention. He moved down from Northern California to start, uh, start working with us as well. We didn't jump into the agency side. We went from affiliate to product ownership. So we started like started running our own or trying to create our own brands, uh, basically like ground up. We had a bone broth company that we launched, um, a few others, the stuff that we really liked were, were e-services and CPGs. E-services were just like super unique because we could, it was like selling air, right? Like we, we built partnerships with the government in Australia to process visa, uh, like travel visas. We partnered with the government of Cal or the state government in California. Uh, the DMV to process online registrations. We just like built these random ideas. And at that time we were like, all we want to do are build these like businesses that cash flow and don't require a lot of people. Right. Um, 
And that's what we did. We just built these like one-off businesses. We could run the ads. We could build the build the systems and pipeline everything. Like just almost like self-run. Um, until one day we had an idea to build a business that we called it Viral Ad Copy, and the whole goal was to just create ads for brands. Right, create, do the ad copy and the images, and just sell sell those packages in bulk. Well, we the response to it was like, this is all great stuff, but like, will you just run the ads for us? And that was like the aha, maybe this week can actually do this. Uh, we can build like a business where we just run people's ads for them. Um, there were a few big agencies at the time that we looked at to kind of like follow blueprint and understand what they were doing. That's like the mute sixes, um, uh, the Hawk medias, the power digitals, a lot of those, um, that we, we we looked at, we're like they're they're great. We learned from them, saw what they were doing, and put our twist on it. Right, coming from that uh, the affiliate space, what we knew about like the respecting every dollar spent, and then uh, also the uh, I guess the um, from the product side, understanding how like businesses actually run, and like the levers that you have to pull, the questions that you have to ask about. ROAS, MER, CPA to make things work. Um, and ever since then, I mean, that's five years ago, uh, this month, actually, we're, we're going into our fifth year. We went from four dudes in a, as one of our first clients described it, like a, a dingy, uh, dingy unlit office space to, I think we're like 35, 36 people all across the country and loving this right just loving the brands that we work with the excitement of this different seasons the different types of businesses and brands we get to work with um so yeah i mean that's it's kind of like oh, that's uh, that's awesome and yeah. just so much to unpack i mean one you know congrats on, on all the success uh thus far i know it's uh it's not easy starting and you know uh obviously you guys came up with the concept but it doesn't always execute right and there's always a lot of challenges along the way we've had COVID over the last few years, which also feels a nice <laughs> wrench or multiplier, depending on how you, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. yeah. Um, so uh cool. A couple things I wanted to talk about there, just off of what you were saying, right? Uh starting with like the pivots you've done, right? Like you mentioned you started on the real estate side of things, you got into affiliate um there, you even started to try to sell a different service initially until uh, even just yeah. Describing what your company does today, I was like, that's a mouthful because you guys do <laughs> a lot, right? Uh, yeah. There. So obviously there's, uh, you know, the ability to to change your minds, right? Make different decisions, move in different directions with the business. Uh, I know it's a little bit scary, right? What what allowed you to feel confident enough to make some of those shifts, right? Yeah. Um, what a question. Um, I, it depends. Like early on, like, I think when you're younger like you're super aggressive, right? You're just like, like if something's not working, change it because there's like, you can, you can stick to it and you can fight, but the reality is like, there's a million ways to make a dollar. You just have to pick the one to make a million. Right. And if, if you have the path and if you have, like, if the market is big enough, which for us, I mean, there's the market's huge, right? There's so many brands. There's so, especially since COVID, like just, online has exploded um it's just finding the things that you are interested in that you're good at that you can develop the skills if you're not good at it um and and leaning into it right like just going for it <clears throat> and when it doesn't work change if you don't like it change when we first started we were like we got to do everything we got to like we want to do paid media like what we started in was like paid media and Google search. Right. And we were like, let's, well, we could do everything because there's so much money to be made from like so much opportunity in, in everything that we're doing. And we're like, why don't we get into web development? Well, we learned really quickly that like, we, not only were we not really good at web development, but like we definitely didn't like it. Right. So it's like, you just decide quickly, like, this is an opportunity. Yes. But do you enjoy it? Is it a good use of your time? Is it, is it a growth opportunity or is it going to cause attrition, right? Like if you stop, if you are not doing good work in one thing, that's going to cause a ripple effect through everything else, right? Your clients are going to sit there and say, 
yes, you're good at that, but I'm pissed about this thing that you said you were also good at. And now I'm going to move the entire book of business, right? Or my entire business somewhere, somewhere else. So like, you, know, you just have to be like very honest with yourself about what you want to do and uh, what you don't want to do, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and lean into the curve, go with it, right? And accelerate on the things that you are really good at. Um, there's so much of, of the things that we do, like I think starting a business, there's so much of it that is luck which is a combination of like skill and timing right like having the right skills at the right time is a huge unlock right but if you're but you can also have like bad luck which is like maybe it's the right skill but the wrong time the right time but you have no skill like so just lean into what you're good at and and stick to it and like just just push hard also like you'll find find the thing that allows you to scale the most, right? So like when I was in real estate, the thing that really triggered me to try to make a move personally was like, I was looking at the environment in LA, I was 24 years old. And I was like, it's going to take me so long to make a name for myself in this specifically in that city. Like I had no connections there. It's a massive city. Like there's a ton of opportunity, but it's, it's a cutthroat city. And I, but I was also like, it's such a small market, right? I just had this aspiration of like, I want to be everywhere. I want to be able to like, there's a bill, there's 7 billion people on the earth. How can I reach as many of those people as possible? And through that kind of like found the internet and through the internet with Joe marketing. And this, that was the unlock for me was like, oh, wow. From the click of a button, I get to reach millions and millions and millions of people like the opportunity in that like it my mind exploded and that's really like how I got passionate about this space and why I really leaned into it that's not going to be for everybody but like I think the the point of that like that that story is just like find the thing that makes you excited that challenges you that makes you feel like just like you're you have opportunity to grow and then pedal the metal go for it I think that's just such good advice and like even the specializing down, right? I think that's one thing that you – like you mentioned, like you guys wanted to do everything. And like ultimately we do live in a world where you can teach yourself how to do almost anything, right? Certain things might take a long time if I'm trying to learn some quantum physics stuff. Like <laughs> yeah. it me a minute, but I could theoretically learn it, right? Um, yeah. There. There's some. There's like, probably some quick YouTubes you could watch. Like, I could do <laughs> physics for dummies, right? Type of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but the, the big thing is I call it the opportunity cost, right? And it's like time is your biggest opportunity cost there. And at the end of the day, like uh, I think even for me, like on the, uh, when I, when I first started doing Amazon, right? Um, Amazon is one, it's one marketplace, but there's so many different th fields even within that specific marketplace. Right. And so I focused entirely on the ads because I was like, I love this, right? I, I like was like I could spend money and see instant results, right? I'm a child of I'm an ADD uh, yeah. fucking kid, you know. It's like I love it, right? Yeah. Like instant gratification. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and so I just really, really honed in. There were times that I remember in the early days, like a lot of distractions or or sh other shiny objects, right? Where it's like, yeah. mm, like I know a lot of people care about content right now. Um, there or like uh, case management, back end support, right? All of these pieces and eventually like I tried to keep my blinders on and really hone in on the stuff that was really exciting for me. And ultimately like that really benefited right at this point, like I can launch any single product I want because I'm so deep in knowledge in like that one particular area. Right. Um, and once there's, you get into, there's a really cool book uh, called essentialism that kind of goes in this. I don't know if you ever read it, but in like the first, first couple chapters uh, there's, an explainer of like essentialism is basically like focus on the things that you have to do right and one of the things that uh that it it uses to explain is like basically like the wheels of a spoke or the spoke of a wheel you can go off in a hundred different directions right and you know you're gonna get an inch deep right you're an inch deep and a mile wide or you can dig into like a couple things and go a mile deep and you're like an inch wide, right? And like the question is, 
and it's gonna it's a question that plagues everybody right especially in the service industry you get like you get you know shiny object syndrome you're like what if i do this what if i do this but like if you really focus on what like that one thing the the essential thing that you're good at that you love like the opportunity become like you just build such a deeper reputation in that thing and then next thing you know people are coming to you because they hear about you they're like this is the this is the team this is the guy this is the gal whatever they're like you have to talk to this person because they know what to do with this and then like i said you can go a mile deep and oh yeah no it's crazy how it opens things up and the other thing too i'll say is it's not like uh it's not like I'm putting blinders on and never going to do those things, right? Like for us as an agency now, like uh, we actually do like really amazing content creation work, right? But what I did is I brought together other folks who focused all of their time and effort on that, right? Yeah. Um, and so we're getting a lot of people that are really, really deep in their subject matter uh, there. And that really allows us to, to see great results. Uh, so I tell people that all the time, like really try and try and find something that you can become a domain expert in. Um, it doesn't mean that you're stuck there. Like you've pivoted a lot of times. I pivoted, you know, myself many times there, right? But that core domain expertise or that core kind of goals that you had is, is some of the things that have yeah. stuck with you, right? And, and been I, able to, I, to get you. I have a question. Right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to change the script. Yeah, let's do it. Your question real quick. How do you avoid the shiny object syndrome? Like how do you... Like, I think like as, as business owners, it's like, if you're an entrepreneur, one of the things that, uh, that we all have ADD, right? Like we all want to try new things constantly. We like, it's, I think it's like part of our brain is wired to like be challenged and try to figure new things out. How do you avoid that in your, like, how do you avoid falling into the shiny object syndrome? trap and i think i think part of it like on my end is i like to game things out right and so i think about uh like yeah i'll notice the opportunity right like i'll uh like other marketplaces we get asked all the time like do you do Wal like walmart target all these other like kroger there's no nope. like a hundred marketplaces you can manage right now <laughs> right um and you know I, I spend a certain amount of time i'd say a month exploring new things right like i try to put like 10 percent of my time into like like more experimental or kind of uh, just like explore different things that are out there or whatever, um, you know, like chat GPT, right? Like how can we incorporate that into our business? Is that something that is uh, worth leveraging? Right. But I also make sure that like that time is blocked out. So it's not um, smart. Yeah. So that that's one thing that helps. So you still have your day to day. So at my core that I'm working on, my brain is still focused there, but I, I do like to have some part of my brain that's like on the kind of thinking on the more long-term vision. Um, so one, it's blocking the time out, but secondarily, it's like, okay, let's assume I want to go down that path. Path. What can I get from it, right? Like what is the long-term benefit of me doing that? Um, and that helps you to start to put into context, like, is this legit? So let's say I learned this skill set, right? What can I do with it? How can I monetize it um, there? How long is it going to take me to actually replicate that? Um, I, I like know even for us, we've got API access to Amazon. And so we've started to build out different software tools, right. Um, to help our, our brands. And there's a lot of things that we can do that make that like a lot of other folks do. Right. And sometimes we're like, Oh, maybe we could replicate this. But when I'm putting that in my modeling, right. It's like, well, okay. I replicate what somebody else does. Right. It is interesting, but I'm still at the same, I'm still producing something that like, I'm still dealing with the same level of competition. I just maybe have a little bit of cost savings now that I have that built. Versus yeah. let's build some tools that are unique, right? And other people don't have built. Like we are like building a profitability analyzer where we give you a PL by item for Amazon. Cause that's like something that like people ask about all the time. Finance teams don't like, there's always this black box of Amazon costs and fees. So we built a tool like that out, right? Um, awesome. Why, like, does that go with our growth stuff? Uh, it's not a direct, it doesn't directly relate to growth, but it is a tool that helps us focus on growth, right? And for us, when I'm saying, you know, taking resources from the team to build something like that out, my mind is saying, okay, uh, I know how much time I'm losing for this, but I know what this can benefit for me. And when I think about the opportunity costs, it does make sense for us to go uh, in that direction, right? Um, there, uh, for, for 
the unique tools, right? When I'm doing it on the shiny object of like, oh, well, everybody's doing this. Do I want to build this too? I'm like, well, actually, it's going to take me a long time to do it. It takes away from the other initiatives that we're working on. And while there's some benefits, it's not enough to take away for me to really focus my time and energy on, yeah. on those things. Um, so I said those are the two things I think that have been helpful. It's like building the long-term vision and then also uh, creating blocks in my schedule to actually give me a chance to explore if I want, right? Um, there, you know, and I, I can do other stuff with those blocks yeah, if, I love if that. I'm in that mode that day. Um, but it's huge because like the other thing is it's like, you'll see something good and all of a sudden everybody wants to get in, right? It's like, oh, yeah. oh, you know, these guys are killing it doing that. We should be doing that. Um, I mean, but, that's, a, that's everything, right? The swarm yeah. effect is real no matter what you're doing is like, like even on the ad side, we see that all the time. Like you find a new format or a new like text layout, like a new call out or a new way of saying things. And like the second that everybody starts seeing it, in like it becomes ubiquitous everybody is doing it and that's what happened with like like on on our stuff like you have um like the ugc style video that nine by 16 vertical selfie video and like you know it i i don't think it's run its course but it's like it's not it's not new anymore right because now everybody's doing it and that's that's with everything like i, th I think across the board like the second that everybody sees something the second people start noticing something new. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I can tell you for Amazon, it's like, uh, like I remember years ago, we, I started telling brands add text to your product images and you could add any text because the bar was so incredibly low. Uh, all of a sudden you'd see a one to 5% bump in conversion rate. Like, and you're like, right. what? Like that's insane. Right. Uh, now everybody or 90% of the sellers are going to add text to their images. Right. So, mm -hmm. The next iteration is okay. Now it's not just text to the images, but we actually need to have some purpose behind these USPs, right? Maybe more thoughtful. Uh, we take it to that next level. Like, I did a, a LinkedIn post on like content on like premium A plus, right? Most brands aren't doing premium A plus right now, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's as soon as you add it, it absolutely balloons your conversion rate, right? So I did a video on LinkedIn yesterday. I know that it'll eventually be like more and more of a thing. Um, but that's okay. Right. That's where we come up with that next level of innovation. Um, and that's where it's important to like, to keep, you know, not just keep that domain expertise. Right. But also continue to know that like as much knowledge as you have, there's always something new. Right. Um, there, like I tell my team all the time, the day that I'm the person that knows the most on our team is the day that our company dies. Right. Because, uh, I should be the dumbest person at our company. Right. You I started like, be, right? you yeah, want to be like, okay. You want to know that there are people that are testing things more aggressively than you or that like care. I mean, as a business owner, I don't know if that ever happens. Like, I, I know like how much people on our team care. I know how hard they work. I like, but the reality is like when it's, when you're an owner, you just, it's, you're wired different. Like, it's like, it's yours. Like if this thing died, like, plus you think about all the people on the team, like you just work relentlessly. Cause you're like, yeah, I got 30 plus people on the team. Like I worry about them. Right. Like that's what like just drives us outside of the passion and the the work and like the relationships that you have that are different with clients, whatever it might be, is like also your team. So you're forced to like think differently, to always like look for new opportunities. But you definitely want your team, you want to know that your team is as into it as you are, right? That they care as much as you do. Yeah. And I think there's part of that look. It's never going to be a one-to-one, -one, but I do think that there's ways that you can start to cultivate environments that are more conducive towards that, right? And I, I always use the first Amazon agency I was at um, called Quiver. We were such a small team. Right? There was like, remember when I first started, there were seven of us and we were managing so much revenue, like uh, like way too much for the team that we were <laughs> with, um, as we expanded. Um, and like normally that's the kind of place where like people want to leave, right? Because it's like they're working super hard. They're grinding. It's There's no... there's little chill or whatever. Um, but everybody, like I used to call it Amazon university, right? I call what we do right now. Our, our training is called SUG university because the idea is that we put so much into training, right? So much into learning and, and really trying to create an environment of like, you can make mistakes, right? We're open we, and we encourage you guys to be experimenting. Um, and it's been really helpful. Like we've gotten so much innovation, like even our, our reporting, right? Like somebody on my team, was like, look, we were doing it manually. Can I build Excel macros towards, can I, like, I want to try to do this, right? Not his, not what we hired him for, anything like that. Um, 
And I'm like, absolutely. I want you to take 15% of your week to work on this special project, right? Uh, there. Eventually he figured out like this Excel macro, which was awesome. We used to be able to just uh, spit these Amazon reports in. Um, and now we have API access. We have it all directly through the API. Our reporting is sick, right? But it comes from the bottom up, right? Which is, which is awesome. And so that's kind of like, you know, if anyone has an agency or just from a team, like I'll say, uh, you know, we are the owners or, you know, I, I, I'm the owner here, but like, it doesn't mean that I don't allow the, I, I still try to create this environment where they are pushing for themselves. Right. Like I, I tell them, I'm like, look, I won't have you forever. Right. But the idea is that, uh, you know, you take your good, your, you're a good person, right? We're going to teach you some great skills and you're going to be an awesome person by the time you leave, you know, and you, you leave here, like you'll be more set up for another, uh, for more money, right? You'll be set up for, for promotions. Um, you know, maybe you'll stay with us and continue to, to drive a, a performance because you like what you're learning here. Um, but it's really like, a I treat my agency like school for you, um, where you are basically getting your scholarship essentially. And like my benefit yeah. is obviously people come to my football games, uh, you know, it's it's kind also, of like, you know, like I think that's an amazing what like we do the same thing at attention, but it's it's like when you empower people to take ownership in what they're doing, like when you said innovation, like that's where it comes from, right? Like take like take the reins off your team, like let them you, like if you hire well, you're surrounding yourself with super smart people, very talented people who want to feel challenged as we do, right? Uh, like everybody like strives to be to be challenged to do new things to like leave their thumbprint so like just if, when you unleash your team's like their passion and their abilities that's where that innovation comes from and that's where you're like that's where you get that leg up on your competition who's who's trying to like suppress their team and say like no you have to do it xyz way because that's the way we've always done it but like just because it's the way you've always done it doesn't mean that's the way it should always be like just unlock your team, like let them, let them run. No, it's, it's huge. And it's, it's something that I think a lot of uh, owners are hesitant on sometimes. Cause it's like, you have to give up control towards that. Right. But I've seen the businesses that operate the most that have, that have been the most successful are the ones that do empower their employees to like, mm -hmm. they, like they will, they will make mistakes. Right. Like that's not the, like that thing you have to be okay with is like, just cause somebody else is going to do it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but uh it does mean that they have a chance to get things better right and and like that freedom and that flexibility you can move faster and you get the innovation piece and that's really just Absolutely. yeah so so huge um it's awesome awesome stuff to chat through uh one question i typically have you know if you're talking to your younger self uh what kind of advice would you have given yourself now you know looking back at things uh compared to uh where you were at back then i have a very unique perspective on this um as we were talking about before we started uh, about three weeks ago i had open heart surgery and um you know being under 40 and being told by a doctor or a surgeon like if we don't do something you're going to be gone in a year it completely disrupts your worldview um i'm good healthy everything um but going through this it forces deep reflection on life um and like what you've accomplished and like what you haven't yet accomplished the things that you want to do the things you start questioning um you know i <clears throat> i going back like 10 12 15 years maybe i don't know when this started but like i wanted to frame my life as like an adventure and i wanted to do things that at the end of the road i could look back on and say i fucking did it right i pushed a grit i did everything i wanted to try to do i did it um i'll tell you that you when you face the prospect of like checking out early i i think maybe it's any time in life you'll look back and think and be like there's still stuff that I want to do, right? I don't think like you're ever like, yep, I did everything I wanted to do because like that's like there's just so much, right? But uh, you know, I will like through this reflecting on some like 
kind of like profound questions like uh am i am i a good son am i a good husband am i a good dad uh <clears throat> who am i a good friend do my friends know that they matter to me like they're like do i love what i'm doing do i love how i'm spending my time like do i feel challenged do i feel fulfilled like you ask yourself a lot of like crazy questions and so the like the way that you frame that question just like context there um i think that there are like there's a handful of things that I'd that I would tell my younger self. Um, say, you know, we can get caught up in chasing things that don't actually fill our cup. So do what actually matters to you and ignore everything else. Being successful is not the same thing as living a, fil a fulfilled life. They're very different. Um, so make sure you're prioritizing the right thing. Surround yourself with people who challenge you, respect you, and love you. Uh, I think the latter is the most important, um, most important of those three things. But more important than that is make sure that those people know that they matter to you. Um, say, so like, take the trip, dance all night, sing karaoke, it's like <laughs> stay up till five o'clock in the morning, go skinny dipping, do things that. Uh, that let you live life with relentless passion, right? Like just go for it. Like, like fuck the haters, ignore them. Like they're not your people anyway. So like move on, right? Like do the things that make you feel like, yes, I'm, I'm like, I am living my life. Um, start a company, like just do it. Right. Like just it, like if, even if you biff it, who gives a shit? Like the fact that you started it, you there's like you're past 90 percent 95 percent of other people on earth that were too scared to just risk it right to just take that chance um and enjoy it right like i think like when you start a business understandably it's hard like you're like you're scared you're like it's money it's sick. like there's a lot there's a lot of like you still have to pay for your life but like just enjoy it if you enjoy it it's gonna work um yeah i'd say like shoot for the moon like hold don't hold anything back if you fail you're not going to regret trying right you're just going to like just go for it um and if you don't shoot for the moon my bet is that you'll look back and ask what if right so just go for it don't leave any questions um and two things that i would recommend taking out of my vocabulary like talking to my younger self would be i'll do it tomorrow right take that out of your vocabulary um or i'll deal with it later like if you're not enjoying something get out of it change your scene like change the scenery like do something different move fast like that that uh that saying uh move fast break things like just go like don't worry about it just do it um and uh i'll do it tomorrow like it's not guaranteed right you, you tomorrows are not guaranteed so like if something is important to you today regardless of what it is just do it call your parents like call your family like go to the park with your kids uh <clears throat> knock out the thing that is bugging you at work like just do the hard stuff and do the stuff that like matters to you so it's probably a lot more than maybe you expected, but that's what I No, I loved it. That was huge. It was so huge. I think, uh, I mean, the just getting shit done is like so important there too. I, I'm a, I'm someone that always like, like, oh, like I'm busy right all the time. You know, you're, you're busy all the time. And so some, it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get to it. Right. It's on my list of things to do. Right. But it's like you said, like that time's not guaranteed. You know, I, I know that, uh, I know that firsthand, like even, uh, found out recently, like, like my, my favorite dog has cancer, right? Uh, you know, he's dying and it, it sucks. And like, I know I always was like, oh, I want to take him to the beach and like do these kind of things, right? And there's things where it's like, yeah, like I say, I'll, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. But like, uh, I'm fortunate enough to know, right, ahead of time, but it's like, I do want to do those things, right? And I'm going to work yeah. on doing those things so that I, I do have those, uh, I don't have those regrets, right? Like you mentioned, I think that's huge. Um, I think the, 
people are scared to to leave things when they're unhappy a lot of times too and it's like i'm gonna get there uh but like no one's gonna do it for you right at the end of the day you got to take that risk i could tell you firsthand i've quit my job without prospects you know yeah no clients uh months and luckily it worked out um but there's moments where I was like fucking like oh my like I remember one Christmas I had like quit my job and I had to ask my like now fiance I was like I need to borrow money to like buy my family presents because I am not there right now you know it's just yeah. like uh it, it's every out. every business owner has been there you like know? I, I we went a year my business partners and I we went a year when we were starting out we didn't take a salary right and it's like that is yeah. so much stress but it's like you know it at the after two years of like the scab healing over, you know, like you lick your wounds, scab heals over, and then you look back, and you're like, holy shit, how did we do that? And then it, yeah. it, oh, yeah. it becomes like something, a story you tell it like at like dinner, you know, it's like, it's just like we, we stuck it out. And you know, sometimes and we, even when we see like what we make on like, like what we're going to make this year and stuff, like we're going to do several million dollars, right? And you're like, shit uh we did nothing like three years ago i was like sweating so hard like yeah. crying on the couch being like what a good my job <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh so yep. that that's really cool too and i think the don't be afraid to fail because you will fail i think that's really huge too like i i uh someone else on this uh one of my podcasts here and he was telling me he started like almost eight businesses that failed before he <laughs> he's he hit the one and he's young this kid was like 25 right and he's going to uh can do like a close to a hundred million dollars this year uh in, in revenue for a brand he launched um like absolutely crushing it and it's because he pushed through it right and it's it's take what you learn from from failure right okay. failure is not a i failed it's what could i have done better what what worked what did it work right um there so, and, and that helps so yeah. much man i'm a uh i'm a I'm a believer in the Pareto principle I don't know if you ever heard of it it's the 80 20 rule right it's like 80 80 percent like there's all sorts of stuff. It's like 80% of uh, or 20% of your work will deliver 80% of your revenue, things like that, right? Internally, like on the creative side, we'll talk about it like, you know, 80% of or 20% 20, 20 of the ads you test will deliver 80% of your ability to scale, right? And it's like, when you think about it, it's like 20% of ads are great, 80% of ads are duds, right? But when you apply that to the idea of starting your own business and, and failing or anything that you're doing, whether you're creating ads or you're starting businesses or whatever it is, is like the more at bats you take, the more likely you are to find success. And like, just know that like the more you stick to it, the more you just dig in your heels and say, I know it's going to work. You're relentless about it. It will work. And just get those at bats. and you'll find, you'll find your win, right? You'll find the thing that, that takes you from, damn it, I'm not paying myself a dime this year to, wow, I'm like, I'm able to take my family to Europe or I'm able to like, you know, do whatever, whatever makes you happy, happy in life. You'll see that switch, you'll experience it. And then all of those blood, all the blood, sweat and tears you put in pay off. No, and it's, uh, I'm still on my journey for sure, but I can definitely tell you it's uh, it helps, right? The 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 hours you put in, you know, definitely definitely help. And I used to sell makeup door to door, and one of the best lessons I learned from that job was they used to say, "Get 300 no's a day, right?" Um, there, because yep. you will find your five yeses, uh, and they were they would never say, "Look for a yes." They'd say, "Look for your mistakes," right? Um, there. So even like whenever I do have a mistake and things like that, um, I try to get excited about it. I'm like, cool, like. One time I overspent by forty thousand dollars one month, like on Amazon. This was back when their system was like really antiquated and it was a huge account. And so our daily spend was so high, right? And they would under report spend. I woke up and I'm like, holy shit. Like I'd end up on the <laughs> Yeah. So I was like, fuck, this is the bad one. Now I had grown that brand sales like by uh three million dollars in three months, uh, in additional revenue. So they were just like, It's okay, like you're a good kid. Uh there, yeah. but I learned a lot, right? I never, ever, ever overspent on an account yep. ever again, right? Because of a, a lesson like that. So, yeah. um, I don't recommend that. To, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> not to do that. Yeah. Do not push I mean, that. Mistakes uh, happen, right? I think that's important that people know too. Is like 
we're not robots, right? We're not an algorithm. We're not a piece of code. We're people. And people are this dynamic mix of logic and illogic, right? We like, we like. So our algorithms make, do that. There's plenty yeah, of algorithms. Oh, that that. true. <laughs> but like we make mistakes and it's not about like, it's not about making the mistake. It's about what you learn from it, right? And how you like, how you evolve from that mistake. And like you, like we overspent, how do we fix it? And like, I now know that that I did not like that experience and I'm not going to do it again. Now I know like systems are put in place to make sure that that stuff happens. And like that stuff has happened to us and in the same boat, like the clients are never like really angry about it because in the past when it, when it has happened, it's like, okay, you guys are getting good performance. So, but like we have to figure out how to fix it. And it's like, that's, that's the, you know, it's the learning, the, the process of learning and like, just ma making things right but yeah no it's spot on well Justin, i don't want to take up too much of your more of your time here today but i really appreciate all the the insights and the conversation i think there's just so much to uh to unpack and you know uh not surprised you're you're where you're at with, with some of the stuff that you've said so uh it's awesome where can uh the folks find you i know we'll, we'll throw some links in the uh, yeah the post too but uh <clears throat> mostly on linkedin Find me. Uh, my LinkedIn is my name, Justin Buckley. Uh, LinkedIn slash Justin Buckley. Uh, you can also find us at uh, attentionagency.com, att agents, attn agency.com. Uh, I have a Twitter or X. I have an X account, uh, but I'm not really on it. I uh, I've not figured out how to unlock it. Um, so mostly on on LinkedIn or email, Justin at attn agency.com. Uh, and yeah, I'm, uh, I love talking about this stuff. I love brainstorming. I love just shoot, shooting the shit. Like it doesn't have to be about, uh, about wanting to, wanting to work with us. Even if you have questions about marketing or whatever, hit me up. I love to talk. Yeah, Justin posts great stuff on LinkedIn too. Uh, some really raw content that's actually helpful on, uh, even if you're doing things yourself. Uh, so definitely check, check them out for sure. And then it's your boy DT straight up growth. Here we go.